In this video, I'm going to go over how to use the count if function. So some of the things I'm going to go over is how to count by category, how to use wildcards, how to count blank cells and non-blank cells, as well as how to count numbers. So to start off, I've just got a simple data set here, uh, the largest companies' stocks by the different sector, and another tab I have them by their, their size and, and market cap. So this is just a really simple example. I just wanted to show you how you can use a count if function in, in this situation. So first off, I want to start with just the basics of how to use a count if function. And that's, you know, let's say we just wanted to look up, you know, I've got a list of a thousand companies or, or stocks in here and how many of them belong to the computers and technology sector. So to do that, start with the count if function and then what I need to do is just select the range that I want to be counting in and my criteria so in this case I can just put in quotations computers and technology this is in case sensitive okay so it tells me 170 and this is format as a dollar so I'll just change that so it gives me 170 items in here have the, the phrase computers and technology in them now, I don't have to hard code this. I can just reference reference the name. So for instance, if I'll just type in here computers and technology, and then here I can use the count if function to select the range and then select the cell and enter. And this way it makes it a bit more dynamic. Now the danger with count if functions is if you've got an extra space, if you've got an extra letter somewhere, like if I just had a space here, it's not gonna pick that up. So you want to be careful that you are uh, typing it in correctly. Like if I type in finance, you know, nicely updates for me there. And, you know, I can put these sections down here. So if I wanted to copy you know, all these range of sections in here, I'm going to paste them as values. And then what I'm also going to do is remove the duplicates. And now what I can do is, again, I can use the count if function again to say look up this range while referencing this. And then I can easily just copy this down. And now it gives me a total of how much I have based on the different categories. Now, in some cases, you may not want to be looking for an exact match. Like I said, this is the basic count if function where you know you're taking the exact match. But, you know, there's there's a couple categories, like let's say consumer staples, consumer discretionary, that, you know, you just want to grab anything that has consumer in it. So what I could do is obviously I could do a type in consumer staples and consumer discretionary in here. And then simply total those up using the, the auto sum here. And that gives me the total. But, you know, let's say I don't want to do that. I want to use something a bit more versatile, something a bit more dynamic. This is where I can use a wildcard to help me. So let's say I just want to type in consumer. That's what I'm going to be looking for. So I can just do a, um, a count if function. And what it does first, I'm just going to do it with hard coding and then I'll show you how I can reference the, the cell. Um, so I'm going to select the range again. And now with the criteria, this time I'm going to type in consumer and it doesn't matter. It's not case sensitive. So I'm going to type in all lowercase and then I'm going to add an asterisk at the end. Close, close brackets. And now that gives me 121, the same total as when I was adding them uh, individually. Now, if I want to make this dynamic, I don't have to type consumer in here. I do need the, the asterisks in there. And then I can just reference this, this cell and then add the ampersand to join those. And now that does the same thing as me typing it in. So if I type in, let's say computers or just computer even, it's still going to give me the total. If I type in auto, it works fine. And so the one thing you're going to want to uh, consider when you're using an asterisk is, you know, is the, is the text coming 
after or before your criteria. So for instance, like right now, if I type in computers, it works just fine because the, the, the asterisks is coming afterwards. So that tells me anything that starts with computers can be included. But let's say for example, that you know I type in technology. There's nothing that starts with technology, so the amp so so the asterisk isn't going to help me here. So I'll show you a couple of ways that you can use an asterisk here. So if I type in computers, this works. If I type in technology, I'm going to have to adjust this formula slightly. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move this asterisk so it's at the beginning and now connect it and now I still get the same total. Now what if I what if I don't know if it's going to be at the beginning or at the end of a string then what I can just do is type in tech let's say and so this isn't going to work in either scenario but what I can do here is put an asterisk before and after okay and now regardless of you know where it is it's still going to give me the same value so in this case i had it at the end because anything after anything that starts with computers shows up here i had it at the beginning so anything with technology at the end so the asterisk represents the the characters or text that will come up before right and if i have it before and after then it's going to grab anything with the word tech in it and even if i just type in the letter s it's going to give me everything that has the letter S somewhere in here. So that's how you can use wildcards in your countif calculations to, to be more, more dynamic. Now, I'll show you another thing that you can do. This isn't really a, a, count, a count if function, but you can use something like count A if you want to count, count all the non-blank non -blank cells. Enter. So it gives me a thousand ones. I've got a thousand values in here plus the header. So that gives me a thousand and one. If I wanted to count how many blanks I have, I could use the count if, select the range, and then just blank it quotes with nothing in them. And that's the same as using the count blank function if you have it on your version of Excel. Just select that and it'll do the same thing. So a number of ways that you can count cells and count values in here. Um, the one thing I'm gonna switch over to now is market cap to show you how you can use the counted function with numbers. So before, you know, in the other example, I was using text. And so there you're looking for an exact match. When you're using with count ifs with numbers, an exact match isn't really gonna work in a lot of cases, as you can imagine, you know, I'd have to have an exact match for these dollar dollar values otherwise it's not going to pick up so it's not going to be terribly helpful but what I can do is I can still still use it with uh, the greater than or less than symbol so if I type in let's say one followed by one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve for trillion and let's say I want to pick up all the all the stocks here that show up as having more than one trillion in market cap. So what I can do is, now let's do the count if function. And then again, I'm gonna select this criteria, except this time, or this range. And for the criteria, I'm gonna use the greater than sign. And then again, use the ampersand to connect it, to connect the value, close brackets. And now it tells me that there are five stocks that have trillion dollar market caps or more. So that tells me it falls within that category. So I could do this again for the same thing. Let's say I wanted to look at 500 million. So it's 5 trillion. Um, 500 million, 250 million, and let's say 100 million. So I just want to grab all these, whoops, all these categories in here. So I can just copy my formula all the way down. And so now I've got a, a breakdown of you know, how many how many of these stocks are over 100 million, 250 million, 500, and 1 trillion. Now, the one the one thing here though is 
there's going to be some overlap here because obviously if something is more than a trillion it's also going to be over 500 million and over 250 million and over 100 million so if you want if you want want to be able to track how many fall in just within that specific range for instance what's between 500 million and 1 trillion then we're going to have to add an extra criteria and you can do that using the count ifs function ifs with an s so this isn't available on older versions of excel but the count ifs with an s basically how it works is you're ent you're entering a pair of arguments each time the first for the range and then the actual criteria so if i wanted to capture all the stocks that fall in between 500 million and 1 trillion what i'm going to do is first set up the criteria to say okay that's my range and i want it to be at least greater than 500 million and i can do a greater than or equal to say if i want to at least be that amount close bracket I actually need the ampersand in there there we go and now i've got my range where it's looking at column b and looking if it's greater than or equal to this value and then again for the criteria range i'm still going to be in column b except this time i'm going to say it has to be less than the value above it so i don't want to include the values that are over a trillion so here i'm checking to say okay it's greater than what I have in D9, but it's also going to be less than the value in D8. And so this way, there's no overlap. And so I can check this by looking, okay, so this is under a trillion, and this is over 500, 500 million. And so I can see the count is seven, so that's, that's correct. And so I can copy this formula down, and it'll work the same way. So if I like at 250 to, to 500 million, I'm looking at these ones right here. And that's a count of 17. So that's how you can use the count if function in a variety of different ways. You can use it for counting blanks, uh, counting numerical values, counting text, and using wildcards and greater than or equal signs to narrow in specifics on what you want, what you want to, what you want to count. So that's in a nutshell how you use the count if function. Thanks for watching.